Hello everyone, these next series of videos I'm going to document how I went about producing a Krevnov style cabinet. It's based on the article in the Fine Woodworking Magazine, issue 208. This cabinet is for my personal collection and will be made of the two timbers that I love the most, Tasmanian Blackwood and Hewan Pine. As you can see, it's quite an attractive looking cabinet featuring contrasting timbers. Now this is the finished cabinet now sitting proudly in my lounge room. My variation is that I have changed the door design by removing the glass and replacing it with some bird's eye hue and pine veneer. I start out by rough sawing all the timber just a bit oversized. Then I let it rest for about a month in the corner of a workshop so the timber can find its own equilibrium. Here's all the timber on the trolley. The first thing I do is cut the legs to length. They're 50mm square by 975mm long, or 2 inch square by 38.5 inch long. I then mark the top of the legs to show how they will sit on the cabinet. The pencil marks are too light for the video, so here it is with the sharpie. I use a box to represent each corner of the cabinet and an F to mark the front of the cabinet and an L and R to show which is left and right. I then cut the rails to length ensuring that they are both exactly the same length. The rail lengths are 500mm by 25mm thick by 80mm high on the long face and 235mm by 25mm by 80mm high on the ends. There are different joints that you can use for your cabinets, but with this project I decided to use dowels. This jig is the Oz jig, invented and made here in Australia. It's simple, quick and accurate to use. I could have used a festal domino tool, but decided against it for this part of the cabinet. I'm using three 8mm, 8mm dowels for each joint. Drilling the holes with the cordless drill was easy and accurate. So I'm not going to bore you with the details. Next step in the process is to make the jig to shape the legs. I could have individually marked each leg and shaped them by hand, but it's easier to make a jig. That way when my mother or any of my siblings wants me to make one for them too, I have a jig already made. I begin with a piece of plywood. I draw out how I want the curves and the legs to be shaped. I then call upon my trusty assistant to mark the curve out for me as I've got both hands on the straight edge, Vera then uses the pencil to mark the curve. Once marked, the plywood then goes onto the bandsaw to cut out the shape. I cut it about 2mm shy of the line because the bandsaw is not accurate enough for me. I then use a spoke shape and some planes to bring the edge down to the marked line. Once the front edge is done, I then work on the back. I use a drill to open up a hole for the scroll saw blade to start. I could have used the jigsaw to do the same thing, but I prefer the scroll saw of the jigsaw. I find that the scroll saw is a lot more accurate, and because of that, I can cut fairly close to the line. Once it's all done, I then go and clean up all the cuts with a spoke shave and sandpaper. The more accurate and smooth the template, the better the results will be on your transfer. This translates to less work planing and sanding on your piece that you're working on. In the next video, we complete the making of this jig template for the legs. This will enable you to do multiple legs in only minutes. Remember, if you like this video, like us on Facebook. You can find us by searching Timber Bits or hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Thank you.